Hello and welcome to Ditching Hourly. I'm Jonathan Stark. Today I'm going to talk about building a product ladder for your business. Before I jump into that, I've got a quick bit of housekeeping. In episode 14, Productized Services, I mentioned a concept called the four phases of engagement. And I got a lot of feedback from that. People were really blown away by that concept. And in that episode, I failed to mention that that was not my original idea, and I wanted to give credit where credit is due. I first heard about the four phases of engagement from Blair Enns of Win Without Pitching in a post called We Will Diagnose Before We Prescribe. And you can check that out at his website, winwithoutpitching.com, and I've got a link to it in the show notes. All right, on with the show. Today, we're going to talk about building a product ladder. If you haven't heard me use that term before, here's a quick definition. A product ladder is a series of offerings priced in a graduated order of magnitude sort of fashion. The idea of the product ladder is to make it easy to turn prospects into customers regardless of the level of trust you have created with them. So in other words, people who have just heard of you will not trust you that much, and they'll most likely enter at the bottom rung of the ladder, so around you know $10, $50, $100, something really low. Assuming that they benefit from that purchase, in other words, they're happy with it, they get good ROI, uh, you know, they, they will have increased the level of trust they have in you and will be more likely to move up the ladder to larger and larger purchases. So for a software developer, a typical product ladder might look something like a, a cheat sheet at the bottom for 5 or $10, and then a book, maybe $29 to $49, somewhere around there. Then in the sort of three-figure range, you could have a video course or an email course or some sort of self-service study. In the four-figure range, you could do something like a roadmap or, you know, some other productized service that, would, you know, I talked about in episode 14. You can check that out. Uh, and then at the top of the letter, you'll have a custom project, which would be probably five or possibly even six figures. Of course, this is just one possible product ladder for a software developer. The specifics of yours will depend greatly on what your target market values, what things they value, and your area of expertise. Now, most developers I work with, they only have one rung in the ladder. It's just custom project. So probably at least high four figures, probably in the solid five figures for a you know a non-trivial custom project. And projects are great for revenue because they take a fair amount of time, maybe three months, maybe six months, maybe 12 months, and it's steady income. Uh, it's a fair amount of money, fair chunk of change, whether you're you know fixed pricing or, or even billing by the hour. But the problem is they aren't super profitable. They have some intrinsic factors that make them a little bit less attractive than other things. They are relatively hard to sell, you know, you have to have a sort of a long sales cycle. You have to have a conversation with the clients, perhaps multiple conversations. You need to have a why conversation with them, capture all of that information, uh, put together a proposal, come up with a price, chase them to review the proposal and, and uh, approve the proposal and then start work. And uh, doing a project is very labor intensive. It takes a lot of attention over a long period of time. There's a lot of collaboration. Uh, it can be very risky for everyone involved. And for a lot of people, uh, this can become pretty stressful over time. So here's what's really cool about having a product ladder. If you only have that one product in your ladder and it's at the very high end, it's almost impossible to have any meaningful visibility into your pipeline. So you just don't know who might hire you for that project. They kind of show up randomly they're sort of all over the map in terms of what the, you know, what kind of business they are. Like maybe it's an offset printer or a plastics manufacturer or like a uh, animal shelter. Adding a productized service to your ladder, you know, just one rung below the the, the high end product makes it a lot easier for your ideal clients to engage with you because a productized service, as described in the last episode, gives them much more clarity about what's involved, what the outcome is, that makes it less risky for everyone. It's a, a lower price that they would need to approve. You know, it's not going to be as much as a full-blown project. And assuming that that all goes well, you know, for folks who buy your productized service, they'll be more likely to move up a rung in the ladder and buy the custom project. So over time, 
as you add more and more rungs to the lower end of your ladder, so under the productized service, maybe you add a video course, you get the same effect where somebody comes to you and they're like, eh, it's, you know, I'll spend 400 bucks with this guy and see, you know, how this class works for me. And if they're happy with the way it goes, they're much more likely to uh, trust you more and move their way up the ladder to higher and higher price purchases. So if you are experiencing this sort of feast famine cycle, the product ladder is your escape. So if you can, if you can imagine having, let's say four products, let's say you've got a book, a course, a road mapping engagement and custom projects. And you've got a bunch of people who've purchased the book, maybe a hundred people have purchased the book, and maybe you've got uh, 10 people who've purchased the course and three people who've purchased a roadmap. And you've got uh, a dry spell coming up with your custom project work. You know, you have, you have customers who have purchased things from you and presumably are happy with them. So you can reach out to them and say, Hey, I've got an opening in my calendar. Uh, a project that I thought was going to come through didn't come through for whatever reason. Uh, if anybody needs something for December or January, then just let me know. I can help you out with that. We can talk about whether or not there's a good fit there. So it allows you to give, uh, it gives you more visibility into the pipeline of your business and it allows you to uh, create, create more customers really uh, in a very low risk, easy to maintain sort of way. All right, that's enough for today. I'm Jonathan Stark, and this is Ditching Hourly. See you next time. If you bill by the hour and would like to learn how to significantly increase your income, please go to valuepricingbootcamp.com to sign up for my free email course. Again, that URL is valuepricingbootcamp.com.